So it's finally happening. I'm switching my primary SIM card from the iPhone 15 Pro Max to the OnePlus Open. There are of course many reasons for it, which I'm definitely going to highlight in this video. But what I'm actually hoping is that my experience of using these two phones will help someone, anyone who's trying to figure out if they should spend upwards of 1 lakh rupees on a tried and tested candy bar design or a foldable phone. Well, if you're here for the first time, I'm Ashad. you're watching Track and Tech English, your destination for detailed, incisive gadget reviews. So let me start off by addressing the most important doubt that most people would have is if the OnePlus Open is a sturdy foldable phone and and will it be durable for long-term usage? Now, I'd say that would have been a concern two or three years ago when foldable phones were just starting to come out and the tech wasn't as evolved. But today, hinge mechanisms and foldable phones in general have become much sturdier. So much so that I've seen a lot of folks using the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold after the second and the third generations and using it for a long time without facing any concern whatsoever. As for the durability of the OnePlus Open itself, let me tell you a few things about it. Now, the hinge mechanism itself is based on Oppo's Flexion hinge single spine structure. But OnePlus has also spent over a year and a half in re-engineering the hinge itself to make it sturdier and lighter as well. For example, the screws used in the hinge are actually made of titanium and some parts of it are made from cobalt molybdenum. Now, cobalt molybdenum is actually a lighter and a very sturdy material compared to stainless steel, surgical stainless steel that's used in other hinges. And the total number of elements used in constructing the hinge itself has gone down from 100 plus to 69 on the OnePlus Open. <clears throat> 69. And this also helps the OnePlus Open have a completely no gap design which is damn cool. More importantly, the OnePlus Open has TUV Rhineland's stamp of approval as well. It's been rated for 10 lakh or 1 million opening and closing cycles. Now this number actually means that you can use this foldable phone, the OnePlus Open, for 10 years without having to worry about the hinge giving in, which is very, very good. And in my two weeks with the phone, I have opened and closed it multiple times without ever feeling that this is gonna give in or this is gonna break. It's actually very, very sturdy and it's quite reassuring as well. Another concern with most people considering a book style foldable is that they're gonna be fat, they're gonna be heavy but that's not really the case with the OnePlus Open. Because as far as the Open is concerned, it is one of the lighter foldable phones that are available out there, especially in this book style format. Of course, the OnePlus Open is heavier than the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but it's actually lighter than the preceding iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is also a candy bar style phone. And this is a book style foldable. In fact, the weight distribution, despite this humongous camera module has been done really well. So much so that I actually expected it to topple over and be slightly top heavy, but that's not really the case. It's very well done. Holding it and using it makes you appreciate the really good engineering and effort that's gone behind making the OnePlus Open. But I do have a couple of concerns with the OnePlus Open. It's only got IPX4 rating. It should have been at least IPX7 or IPX8, maybe next year. And the second concern is that since this has a really large camera module, placing it on a surface and using it causes a lot of table wobble, especially when you open it and use it in the you know tablet mode. All in all, the OnePlus Open takes care of all of the concerns that you might have with the book style foldable and it helps you make that switch from a candy bar to a foldable design. But of course, in long-term usage, the service that OnePlus will provide in case of any concerns will also play a huge part. So we'll have to wait and watch how OnePlus handles these things. But the best part about the OnePlus Open is that you get two devices for the price of one, a phone and a tablet basically two displays for the price of fun. And as an Indian, I'm super happy because that is extreme value for money, especially if you're spending over a lakh. And the best part about the OnePlus Open is that it's got your standard candy bar aspect ratio on the outside of 20 is to nine. So even if you're watching any widescreen videos, you don't have to live with any letterboxing, which is definitely a good thing. Plus playing games on the OnePlus Open's widescreen display is actually possible. And considering it's light, it doesn't weigh you down either. I prefer it over the narrow display on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold five. And once you open it, I genuinely love it primarily because it turns into a productivity monster. It's also got a nearly one is to one aspect ratio. So it's almost square. It's like an iPad mini. Plus it can also be your e-reader on the go. Moreover, on the outer display, you get something called ceramic guard, which is 20% more impact resistant than Corning's Gorilla Glass Victus as well. And on the inside, of course, you get ultra thin glass and both these displays on the outside and the inside actually have a pre-applied screen protector. The one on the outside is something that you can peel out. Now, if you do buy an iPhone 15 Pro Max, you will have to buy a screen guard separately. And more importantly, you will actually need one because it is extremely extremely prone to scratches. I have scratched it way too much in my time. And the display specs on the OnePlus Open are unbeatable. They are absolutely fantastic. You get a 2K resolution AMOLED panel, yes, 
but you also get a peak brightness of 2800 nits when you're watching HDR content in a 5% you know brightness window and apart from that when you take the phone outdoors you get a peak brightness of 1400 nits in high brightness mode this is on both the internal and the external display you get HDR 10 plus support and Dolby Vision with Netflix support right out of the box as well and you've got Pro XDR support as well this is something that iPhone has been doing for a couple of years actually more than that maybe where the full brightness of the display is utilized to show you how that looks especially when you capture HDR pictures and the difference is clearly visible to your eyes and of course you've got a 120 hertz LTPO3 panel with 10 hertz to 120 hertz on the outside and 1 hertz to 120 hertz on the inside that's not it even the haptic feedback has been tuned exceptionally well with O haptics it's actually better than that of the iPhone if you ask me and I must appreciate the fact that Android OEMs like Google uh, OnePlus and Oppo are bringing the fight directly to Apple and uh, Apple's Taptic engine so if you ask me iPhone 15 Pro Max's single display has nothing on the OnePlus Open's dual display which is also extremely spec heavy as for the audio experience with the phone it's got a triple speaker setup with spatial audio support as well and when I listen to the uh, you know sound right next to the iPhone 15 Pro Max it sounded better to me you take a listen for yourself and let me know what you think Now I've also been testing and using the Sony WF-1000XM5 and as an audiophile I'm happy that the LDAC codec is actually supported on the OnePlus Open but it's not on the iPhone. You know that iPhone doesn't support Bluetooth lossless yet. But if you're somebody who's using a wired USB DAC with a very good pair of IEM or headphones, then you get bit perfect audio support on the iPhone, which is currently not available on the OnePlus Open with Android 13. But Android 14 is fixing that too. Uh, bit perfect support is coming to Android really soon, and I want to test that out. Now, one major reason why I'm switching to the OnePlus Open from the iPhone 15 Pro Max is the software experience. Mainly because it enhances my productivity multifold no pun intended so I'll tell you an example if I have to check the draft of a short video that my editor has shared with me on the iPhone I'll have to open it so it'll show up on the iPhone on a single screen and if I have to give changes then I'll have to sort of switch to the chat app but on the OnePlus Open, I can open the video on one side. I can give my uh, feedback on chat on the other side. Considering all the power that is available, I think OnePlus is utilizing it to its full extent. iPhone is not. And you know what? I've seen a lot of iPhone apologists tell me that, oh, split screen is not useful. Who uses that on a phone? Well, I do. I know a lot of people who do as well. And especially on a book style, a foldable phone, it's very, very useful. And you know what? That's just me scraping the surface of using the tablet display on the inside. You also get a persistent taskbar, which I feel is a godsend because you can obviously, uh, you know, switch to any app from the icons that are available at the bottom. But more importantly, you also get a dedicated app drawer. So that's also handy. And and OnePlus goes one step further and gives you access to your recent files, images, all of that so you can access that directly from there as well, which is very, very useful. Using the OnePlus Open makes me feel like I'm actually using a proper PC. But allow me to get a little bit greedy out here because I feel that there are certain features that definitely should make it to the OnePlus Open's next version. So dedicated stylus support would have been really, really nice to have. And a Samsung Dex like or, you know, Motorola ready for like feature would have been good too. So the moment you connect it to a larger display using a wire or you know wirelessly it should be able to show you a desktop like format that would have been very very nice oh by the way one of the major reasons why i want to keep using the oneplus open compared to the iphone 15 pro max is that at least in my time with the iphone 15 pro max i have faced a lot of bugs where the camera would go black and there were a few app freezes as well with ios 17 but oneplus opens software experience has been a zero bug experience which is very, very heartening to see. OnePlus has been putting in a lot of job in ensuring that, you know, the software experience doesn't break with the foldable. Now, talking about the performance, OnePlus leaves no stone unturned. You get some of the best specs on an Android flagship phone. You get Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, 16 GB of LPDDR 5X RAM and 512 GB of UFS 4.0 storage. While the OnePlus Open doesn't beat the Apple A17 inside, uh, you know, the iPhone 15 Pro Max in raw benchmarks or gaming performance, it's still pretty good. I have highlighted my performance experience with the OnePlus Open in my detailed review, so go check that out. But I face no heating issues, I face no throttling issues. So that's very reassuring as well. Now, battery life on the iPhone 15 Pro Max has been great for me, but it's not bad on the OnePlus Open. Now with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, I would get a screen on time in the average range of seven and a half hours. 
but with the OnePlus Open, I'm getting six and a half hours. But the twist in the tail, and hopefully not the twist in your cable, is that OnePlus offers you much faster charging speeds. So you get support for Superbook 67 watt charging speeds with an 80 watt charger bundled inside the box, and it can charge the OnePlus Open from zero to 100 in about 43, 45 minutes. And if you have to charge the iPhone 15 Pro Max, you can actually watch an entire Hindi Bollywood movie because it takes two hours, over two hours, two hours, 10 minutes, two hours, 20 minutes to charge from zero to 100. So battery wise, again, OnePlus Open hasn't been a concern. Now talking about the cameras, I have done a detailed sort of analysis in my review itself. So go check that out if you haven't already. But we know for a fact that the OnePlus Open has a very spec heavy camera setup all of which are going to be detailed right now in front of your screen. Now, when I did test the cameras out, the pictures that I got from them were generally good, especially the telephoto also performs well, but there were some inconsistencies. Overall, the iPhone 15 Pro Max offers better, more trustworthy, more reliable camera performance compared to the OnePlus Open. And hopefully the inconsistencies that I mentioned with the camera performance of the OnePlus Open will be fixed with a software update. So let's wait and watch. Generally, uh, you know, OnePlus does issue camera updates, camera performance updates to ensure that, you know, the camera performance becomes better from the launch date itself. Although that's a compromise I'm willing to live with right now because at least OnePlus gets all the basics right. You get a primary, you get an ultra wide, you get a proper 3X periscope camera and you get a couple of selfie cameras as well. And you get proper 4K video recording from all the cameras including 4K 30fps Dolby Vision video recording as well. And I must say that using the foldable style form factor also gives you some flexibility. For example, you can actually use the primary or the ultra wide to take selfie pictures because you can have a cover screen preview of the camera app itself and from there you can like sort of take selfies like this, which is very, very nice. But yeah, iPhone 15 Pro Max's cameras is the one thing that I'm going to be missing when I switch to the OnePlus Open. So I'm smitten by the OnePlus Open to the extent that every other candy bar style phone, including the iPhone 15 Pro Max, feels boring now. See, I knew with the Open, OnePlus was going all out, but I genuinely didn't expect it to be so refined, so polished and generally so good. Now that I said what I wanted to say, what would you prefer? Would you prefer a candy bar style iPhone 15 Pro Max? Or would you prefer a foldable if you're spending over a lakh? Let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.